Welcome once again to the online Bible study. Glad you could join us. Uh, subject title tonight is a question. Why do we need the Old Testament? And I thought it might be an interesting one to look at as over the years I have actually been asked that question a number of times. People have come to Christ, read the Gospels, gone through the letters of Paul and etc. Looked through the New Testament and grown in Jesus. And then at some strategic point, one or two came and said, so why do I need the Old Testament? It's not a silly question. And because it's not a silly question, it deserves a good answer. So we're going to try and do that tonight. And to do that, we're going to start with uh, Paul's second letter to Timothy. Uh, Timothy was his protege. And we're going to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. But as for you, that's Timothy, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learnt it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, I'm sure that we all understand that the early Christians did not have what we now know as the New Testament. For them, the scriptures weren't even called the Old Testament. They were simply known as Holy Scripture. In in time, Paul's letters and those of the likes of Peter and John, etc., were read and studied amongst the believers as they were dispersed over the region. Those letters get passed around and they would t teach people things. Paul had journeys and would go to these cities and explain some of his writings, etc. Jesus himself quotes the Old Testament scriptures and does so. He does it with clarity and dignity and uh, authority. He does it better than anybody else, I would think. Although the new was coming, of course, the revelation of the word now flesh, John 1.1, 1, 1, we see a seamless union between the old and the new. And now we have it together as the Bible. The term Bible is Biblos, and it literally simply means book. You get a lot of books together, you've got a library. And that is what we really do have. We have a full library of God's Word, a collection of writings, books and letters that make up our present Bible. So we need to read and understand the Old Testament as God's Word, leading up to the revelation of Jesus Christ and ultimately, of course, the letters that were written and the instructions creating the New Testament. Sometimes, just by way of illustration, we can buy something that requires us to read the manual. And it's not uncommon for people to scan manuals, find the bit that's relating to what they need to know at the time. They often think they'll get their way around it later. They'll learn by experience. They don't need to read all the complicated parts of the manual. And so how do you turn it on? Let's find out where you put this. And they scan the manual only to find out later they should have read it all, discovering that if they'd read it, they'd have understood it more and it would have made great sense because it was written and it was written to be read, basically, uh, <clears throat> and understood. So with our Bible today, God's word in the Old Testament prophesies of Jesus Christ. It gives instructions and backgrounds and talks of journeys from creation through the fall onto the pathway of redemption. So let's go back to Paul's words to Timothy a moment. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from who you learnt it. What did he learn? The scriptures, the holy scriptures. And you have learnt it since infancy. You know the holy scriptures. So he, Paul says, Timothy, you have been trained up since you were a tot in the holy scriptures. You know this. Reading the Old Testament for many, can be a bit of a struggle. Some have said to me over the years, I, I mean, 
it's a generalization, but they, <laughs> I read three chapters of Genesis. I dip over into Exodus, find out a little bit about Moses, jump into the, into the Psalms, read the ones I like, read a bit of Proverbs. Then I read a bit of the New Testament that I like, and that's me done. Now, that's got to be a reading plan for disaster. So much gets missed if you do something like that and make that your habit. Looking back at what, Paul's write, what Paul writes to Timothy, we can see how Timothy was instructed in the scriptures from infancy. The sooner we study and the sooner we learn. From sound teachers, the better we understand God's word. And we will have so much in our, our armory of scripture. It is my opinion, if someone reads only the Old Testament or only the New Testament, they've only re ever read half the story. If you're, and my habit is only ever to read the New Testament, we only get half the story. It's a good story. It's a great story. It's a story of hope and deliverance and faith and renewal. But where did it come from? I once saw someone open a book and read the last page. On inquiring why they were reading the last page, they said, I'd like to know how this ends and see if it's worth buying. I didn't understand that at all. I liked the mystery of getting to the end and finding out later, but they would just read the end. Is it worth reading? No. Put it down. I know that in general, we, we don't read the Bible like a novel. I know that. But I encourage anyone to at least once in your life, read the whole Bible through. Now it's a big task. Pace yourself. You could do it in a year. I know the church has a reading plan. Get into that if you haven't. Read the scriptures. Sometimes we read through the Old Testament and in so doing we come across things that are hard to understand. Difficult to comprehend. They're strange things, aren't they? Traditions about instructions on how you eat your food, how you cook your food, what food you can or can't eat, how you kill an animal, what you do with the entrails. What about new moons and, and times of harvest? They all have significance. Just because we are in, and in the main, we are Gentile believers, it doesn't mean for one minute that we should not learn about what came before. So, should we read the Old Testament? Yes, of course. It's full of amazing acts of faith. It's amazing re revelations of deliverance and valuable lessons can be learned just how God moved men and women in the season that they were in. The Psalms, they're a treasure of wisdom. They've got prayerful questions as well as great answers. Proverbs asking difficult questions and other life issues. One of the things I tell people that I have found <clears throat> surprises them is that Jesus wasn't a Christian. Obvious, I know. He was a Jew. All the same, the penny doesn't seem to drop with some people that Jesus wasn't a Christian. He was brought up a Jew. He learned the scriptures. In fact, he was so intelligent that he knew the scriptures so well by the time he was 11 he was astounding great orators and teachers of the temple. The majority of the first believers were all Jews. <clears throat> they would continue their worship in the synagogue and the temple and keep the Sabbath. But they would also meet for fellowship, generally on the first day of the week. And for the Jew, that was a Sunday. And I believe that's where we got our tradition of meeting on a Sunday. So let's remember that the reference to the New Testament in the New Testament to scriptures is a reference to the Old Testament. Whenever the New Testament mentions the scriptures, it's talking about the Old Testament. With that in mind, let's look at a few verses from the New Testament. Now let's go to John 5, verses 39 to 40. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, You diligently study the scriptures. Because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. 
He said, you're reading the old scriptures to see about having eternal life, but I am that eternal life. These are his, his words concerning him coming from the Father to complete the work of redemption, to bring the age of grace. He would replace the forerunner, John the Baptist, and bring revelation and living word. Searching the Old Testament, the scriptures that we've mentioned, should help us see how Jesus is always central uh, in as a figure in the prophecies and the revelations spoken of as the coming Messiah. He's there throughout all the pages, though never named, of course. You'll see how the believers, uh, we read through the scriptures in a place called Beria, they were far more diligent and noble to search the scriptures and find out if Paul's teaching was accurate. Acts 17 verse 10, let's have a look at that. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Beria. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berians were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. So once again, why do we need the Old Testament? Well, it's not just for its eloquence, and it is eloquent. Not just for its amazing stories, but far more than that. Turning to Romans 15, verse 4, we can read these words. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. I think that is self-explanatory. Everything that was written in the past helps us understand and encourage us in the scriptures that give us hope. Now, let's take a look for a moment at a word from Psalm 119. And it's one of, verse 105, very well known. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, let's remind, leave that there a moment. Let's remind ourselves how John opens up his gospel. In John 1. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. One version says not overcome it. Now, you'll have noticed, <clears throat> I'm sure, that John does not say in the beginning, Stay with me now. In the beginning, he doesn't say this. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It was with it was with God in the beginning. The word you will have spotted there that shouldn't be there is it. The word is not an it, it is a who. And that who is Christ. So we may say that Jesus is the lamp to our feet and Jesus is the light to our path especially as he is the light of the world. So we need the Old Testament because without it, we are short of the whole story. Listen to Peter's words in 2 Peter 1.19. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Now when Paul was being maligned, in Acts 24, we read from verse 5 onwards, we have found this man to be a troublemaker, they said, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect, he even tried to desecrate the temple, so we seized him. 
By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn the truth about all these charges that we bring against him. The Jews joined in the accusation, asserting that these things were true. And when the governor motioned for him to speak, Paul replied, I know that for a number of years you have been a judge over the nation, so I gladly make my defence. You can easily verify that no more than 12 days ago, I went to Jerusalem to worship. My accusers did not find me arguing with anyone in the temple or stirring up a crowd in the synagogues or anywhere else in the city, and they cannot prove to you the charges they are now making against me. However, I admit that I worship the God of our fathers as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that agrees with the law and is written in the prophets. I have the same hope in God as these men, that there will be a re resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked, so I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. So I hope that you can see through all of this that we have amazing revelations in what we know as the New Testament. We also have riches in the forerunner, the Old Testament. In totality, we have the Bible. You may, if you wish, think about it as the Old Testament being by the Bible part one and the New Testament, the Bible part two. But certainly you have to bring it together as a whole. And all of this being God's glorious revelation and provision for our redemption. So when you think about the Bible, please don't just subdivide it up. I know it's written in books and sections. But look at this precious collection of revelation and see how deeply it affects your soul. Have a, have a think about reading some of the early revelations of Jesus, the prophets, the Psalms. As I said earlier, take time to read the whole thing once in your life through if you haven't already done that. And all that we've looked at, you can witness and testify and see that it's so important to read the Old Testament as well as the New. Well, I'm going to leave that thought with you. Mull it over. Think about it. Some will already say, hey, I do that. That's always been my way. Well, that's great. But just in case, let's never leave one behind. Just in case someone might be listening in and thinking, well, I don't think I've ever delved into the Old Testament. Uh, I encourage you to do that. In your time, in a way that works for you, get a Bible reading course, use the church's one that, that's out there. Um, whichever way you do it, treasure the old and the new. And you will find that in so doing, you will end up getting a bigger, better picture of Jesus if you've read the Old Testament than if you've just read the new. And as powerful as it is, it, it, the story is in the new, what led up to it brings us a great revelation of God's deliverance. Well, bless you and have a good day and see you next week.